All right, everybody, this is Austin of the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel, coming to you with a new video. Uh, this time, we're going to talk about Fenton Art Glass. Now, Fenton Art Glass started um, just after the turn of the 20th century, 1905 or 1907, started by two brothers, I think, um, I think John and Frank Fenton. Now, I could be wrong about that. John and Franklin, I'm sorry. I think those were the two brothers. Um, started in 1905 or 1907, and they actually only stopped producing art glass, I think, 2011. So uh, they went for more than a century, and uh, actually pretty recently, um, I think 2018 or something, they sold their old factory, and they're going to build a school on that old property there. So yeah, um, Fenton is a American art glass company. Uh, they produced a wide range of colors, styles, shapes, all sorts of different things, um, all sorts of different patterns, types of glass, colors of glass. So here you see we have got um, an opalescent, uh, a, uh, a um, opaque, um, another opaque. Obviously these are opaque, but they're custard glass. Uh, it's a bit different from the other opaque glass because there's a there's obviously uranium in custard glass So these actually glow under a black light. I don't know if I can Can we turn off enough lights to do that really quickly so I can show you exactly what we're talking about here? Um, I think maybe just another couple Okay, what do we th what do we think? Hold on. Hold on. We got this. All right Okay, so we can see if we shine over here we got pretty much no uh, no response from a black light. Everything's kind of normal. Uh, even over here, there's not much going on in the glass cabinet. You can see, there's there's nothing really else glowing in there. But then you come over here, and these are surprisingly bright, aren't they? So those are custard glass, and they've got uranium in an opaque glass. <clears throat> And that is custard glass by definition. Um, it is supposed to be a slightly yellowish, greenish hue. And um, yeah, that's what it is. So we're going to get to check out all sorts of different Fenton labels and marks and even some artist signatures here. For example, um, we've got this beautiful little bird with two different Fenton stickers on it, hand painted by Fenton, and then authentic Fenton handmade, which looks like a glass blower with his head um, curled up onto the underside of the sticker. I'm just going to try and gently. There we go. So, yeah, we can see the little stickers there. And uh, signed by Patsy, someone. So, I'm sure Patsy is a known Fenton artist. I just joined a couple of Fenton groups, so I'm hoping I can talk to them about some of these pieces. I think they'll find some of them interesting. I like the hand-painted ones especially. Here's another um, bird with the same Fenton sticker. It looks like his other sticker was in a different place and he's lost that since then. And this one is signed by R. Delaney. As you see, it's pretty neat detail on these birds. I don't know exactly what they used to paint them. I don't know if uh, maybe they just put some glue on there and glued some sort of glitter to it. I don't, I don't think it's, it's not really glitter. I wonder if it's just crushed glass. That would actually make quite a bit of sense, wouldn't it? But yeah, very pretty little thing. Radioactive, it's kind of neat. Um, this appears to be a, just a slightly different sticker than those other two pieces there, huh? In the other one, you could visibly see the bench that the guy was rolling stuff out on. Whereas this, it's just a, uh, like obviously it's still a craftsman. And it says, uh, what's it say? Someone read it to me. Authentic Fenton Handmade. Okay. And you know, I don't know if we've ever, uh, I don't know what this pattern, oh, you know what, let me, let me make sure everybody's kind of away from everybody as we do this. I don't want to bonk anyone or anything. Isn't that a very pretty pattern? I guess I had never really looked at this before. As far as the uh, pattern on the outside, I had just seen that it glowed. I think these must be lilies. 
Well, no, that's not a lily, is it? Um, it's not a hyacinth. Um, what am I thinking of? What what are they? It's very pretty, isn't it? They really do look like uh, pond lilies in there, so I'm not sure exactly. I like that quite a bit, though. It's a very interesting mold. Interesting pattern. Um, okay, so then we'll move on to our little swan here, who's just sort of an opaque kind of, well, I, I don't want to say brownish, but sort of, sort of a brownish color. He's hand painted too. I don't remember, I don't think this one specifically said Fenton, but I assume this is Fenton. Hand painted by, um... I'm not sure. Diane Gersell, maybe? Maybe. <clears throat> Sometimes I kind of count on looking at these bigger on my TV, and then uh, I actually figure out who the artist was by seeing it all blown up on my TV. So there's three hand-painted pieces so far. And this little swung glass vase. This is called swung glass, I think, or stretched glass, or uh, they have uh, a few different terms for it. This one's... um. I'm going to say 7 inches, maybe 8, I'm not sure. I don't want to catch you, I don't want to let you catch me overestimating on that. I like its little details. And you know, it's got to be hard to get paint to stick to glass for 60 years or whatever. Oh my goodness, I need another drink of water, hold on. So then we come to the back side, often my favorite part of the piece. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm sorry. And then, uh, and then look at that, we've got the remainder of a Fenton sticker, which matches the ones that we were just looking at on the birds, but not on the, uh, but not on the, um, compote. And then this one is hand painted by S. Um, Muni's? I'm going to go with Muni's. I think so. So yeah, I was right about that. That's definitely a Fenton piece. We can see the remainder of the Fenton sticker on it. <clears throat> and yeah, I got that for $2 last night. My wife and I agreed that I uh, we couldn't spend any money on pretty much anything. <laughs> so, so let me tell you about how I got this vase for <laughs> Because my wife was like, listen, you got to go and buy groceries don't do anything reckless because we don't have any money and I was like of course I know and then she fell asleep and left me to go to the grocery store by myself no adult supervision and our Aldi shares a parking lot with Goodwill and oh, I hate to say it man I hate to say it sometimes I'll go past a Goodwill <laughs> or Salvation Army or something and I'm like, oh my god, what if there's something in there that's just worth like a million bajillion jillion dollars? And I'm the only one who knows. Which, you know, it's like like this. I shouldn't have been the first one to pick that up. I went to <laughs> I went to Goodwill, you know, it was oh Friday night at like five o'clock in the afternoon, maybe even six o'clock in the afternoon. And uh and yeah, I was just getting groceries and then I saw Goodwill and I was like, okay. So I can't possibly have been the first person to see this, but I was apparently the first person to pick it up and take it home for $2. So so I'm always worried that there's some treasure sitting somewhere that's super valuable and somebody that doesn't even know what it is is going to buy it, or at the very least I don't get to buy it, which is really just... Ugh. So anyway, on, <laughs> with, a, with a pretty severe case of the just-in-cases, I, uh, <laughs> I went into Goodwill, and this is all I found, you know, a little $2... A little $2 swung glass Fenton vase. And that's what I did. Okay. Now I've gotten deals on almost all these pieces. Um, I don't think any piece here I've paid more than $7 for. This bowl says $7. So I apparently paid $7 for that. I actually paid t uh, $15 a piece w with like a 20% discount on those uh, custard glass birds. Uh... The two swung glass vases I got as part of a lot of vases, uh, it must have been, I don't know, it must have been 10, 15, maybe even 20 different pieces of uh, glass and ceramics, which I don't think like the ceramics and pottery or anything, but 
But yeah, I got at least like 10 glass vases out of this deal and uh, paid $60 for the lot of them. So, so yeah, I, I did really well on all the prices of these. Um, this was like a dollar at a garage sale. The second I saw it, I was like, oh, that's a fairy lamp. And then, uh, and then I was like, well, let's look at the bottom. Sure enough, a little Fenton fairy lamp. Uh, blue opaque hobnail. I think this is hobnail. And I think hobnail is just, uh, you know, these little protrusions here. And I think that's a Fenton deal. I think they made that. Now, this is actually not hobnail. Uh, a lot of people have it listed as hobnail. I'm not positive it's Fenton. I don't really have a sticker or any evidence, but but this isn't hobnail. This is uh, moonstone, I believe. You can see it protrudes quite a bit further than than hobnail does. And I think uh, I think that's basically the deal, except that this is kind of a uh, I don't want to say pearlescent. Um, Opalescent? I think opalescent is the word that I'm looking for there. So yeah, I think that's an interesting piece. I really do like the way it uh, bubbles out all over like that. So yeah, this is Fenton Moonstone as opposed to Hobnail. A lot of people have it. Uh, now, I believe, I'm not an expert on this, but I believe a lot of people have this mislabeled on their ads and stuff. So. So if you've got an ad up for this Fenton type of glass right here, my camera's having a pretty tough time focusing on that. Okay. Maybe if we pull it back slowly. It's really cool. I mean, I really like the way it throws light and stuff. And then inside there, that's that's kind of crazy looking, huh? Focus it up. Let's go, buddy. You can see all sorts of weird shimmers as you do that. You know, I don't know if you guys like that I like actually explore these things, like I've never seen them, because I really haven't, and I really like to explore them, like I've never seen them. So yeah, I mean, this has a seam in it, and then uh, as you go up you see that the seam actually eliminates. So that's another sign that uh, this was stretched after being in a mold. <clears throat> and you'll notice the mouth, I set that down a little aggressively, I apologize. Um, you'll notice the mouth kind of matches that mouth. So, I don't know if that's a pretty stereotypical mouth for Fenton or not. Now, you might see this and think, this is hobnail. But this actually isn't hobnail either. This is, um, I believe this is called Cabbage Rose. We haven't really talked about colors too much. Um, you know, people collect different colors. You know, some people only want a pink room. Somebody, some people want a purple room. Uh, some people love amber, green, whatever. Uh, red. So I think um, I think the colors according to popularity are pretty much purple, pink, and red at the same go. And then uh, uh, probably like blue <laughs> as a second place too. I mean as far as I can tell people really tend to go for purple and then pink but I mean blue and red seem about as popular as pink but purple is really the one that people kind of go batty for. Now I think this is another hobnail piece. Now, you can see there's just, you know, small kind of gentle protrusions as opposed to the moonstone piece that are really sticking out like little phalanges. Now this piece is, uh, this piece is marked Fenton. We can see their, uh, we can see their impressed mark there, or embossed, whatever. And then the Fenton Gift Shop, Williamstown, West Virginia. And I'm sure we could probably date these just by having that sticker and, and knowing this stamp. But this one's also got a stamp on the bottom. So yeah, that's a brief introduction to Fenton Glass. Um, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not a museum. <laughs> it's not every Fenton piece you're ever going to see. It's a, it's a pretty varied little lot though, isn't it? I'm pretty happy with my, uh built collection of Fenton glass so far. Now these aren't things that I'm trying to keep forever. I just, uh, if I see something good, I buy it and I make a video about it. So if anybody needs any of these things for their collection, that's fine. Just get a hold of me. Best I Can Afford Antiques channel on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And yeah, this is Fenton glass, custard glass, uh, 
all sorts of all sorts of cool stuff. Swung glass, hobnail glass, moonstone glass, colored glass, hand painted glass. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty neat around here, isn't it? I'll have to do a Murano video next. You know, here I am. Showing you the duck's butt, as it were. Are you guys familiar with that phrase? That's the duck's... Um, you know. If you don't know the phrase, I'm sure you could Google it up. Just type in, that's the duck's... I don't know why it's a phrase, but it is a phrase. So yeah, this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques Channel. Hopefully always showing you something neat. Showing you something interesting. Showing you something creative and crafty and cool and beautiful and special and shiny. <laughs> we got all the things. Well, we're trying to anyway. This is Austin the Best I Can Afford Antiques Channel. Thank you so much for still coming by and listening to me talk about stuff. I so sincerely appreciate you guys. I love your comments. I love talking to you guys. Everything's super interesting. I love seeing the things you've collected. Because, you know, I've never seen, outside of the things that I have, I've never seen anything else. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> seeing your things is actually a pretty cool thing for me. I'm not, like, blowing smoke at you or anything. I'm not like, oh, yeah, that's a real nice piece. I, I would estimate it from the 18th century. <laughs> like, I don't know all that stuff. <laughs> I'm just trying to look at pretty things. And if I figure something out about a pretty thing, I'll tell you what the thing I figured out. So uh, so we're all on pretty even ground here, unless you're an expert, in which case I'm not. And go easy on me. This is awesome. Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Thanking you genuinely for tuning in, subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, doing all those things. Got 183 subscribers today. That's crazy. It's crazy to me that so many people enjoy my channel. And genuinely, I truly enjoy you. So thanks for coming.